Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the solution to the first problem from the 2025 USACO January Contest in the Silver Division, the problem cow checkups. In this problem, we are given n cows that are standing on the line and we once again have to erase where, where we uh, have both the initial and the target position. And we also have the operation where we reverse the subarray and we want to find uh, how many uh, checks we will do over all possible subarrays. So if you competed in bronze and promoted you getting a full score, you might be aware of the same problem which was given in bronze, but with lower constraints and a slightly different uh, goal. Now, uh, if you were to not compete in bronze, regardless of whether you competed in bronze or not, the ideas for this problem will be quite a bit different from the ones for the other problem. And what we did, what uh, we have to do here is to find a way to count the total number of checks we perform over all the subarrays and n is rather big. So again, n squared solutions will not be good enough. And obviously, as you can see, the subtasks for brute force solutions, there are only two test cases for brute force solutions, but uh, there are also uh, test cases with randomly generated data where some more optimized approaches would work, but again, not much for uh, these other approaches besides the optimal one. Now, how do we go by approaching this? So first off, if we were to try to do something in n squared to check for two numbers, how many times they will show up in a pair in correct positions, then the contribution would be computed in O of one for each pair. But again, the, uh, the answer will be uh, computed in n squared, which would be too slow for this problem. Now, how do we go by computing this in linear time? Now, first off, we want to find a way to know for every position what is the total number of times we will have a value that is equal to itself. Obviously, if a position already starts with uh, the same value as it should be, then we can add up the number of subarrays that don't include this value. Let's say if we were to have this for three and two, let's say that we had three here, then we would have had all subarrays that end until here, plus all subarrays that start from here onwards or even later. However, we need to also compute how many of these subarrays exist with, uh, within the bounds of this position that give us uh, a suitable uh, that give us a suitable answer and if we go back to some other ideas we can use for these kinds of problems because the numbers are all up to n we can maybe think at storing the positions at which the numbers show up and then maybe perform some math or doing some prefix some stuff to get this done but again these are just rough ideas and we need to refine them now, in order to continue my explanation, I will explain everything from the perspective of a single value. Because if we, if we can understand how to compute for a value situated at a random position, how many, add, how many subarray, how many points we get out of the inversions, reversals, then we will know how to do it for every single other position. And let's assume that we have a target value, let's say at position five. It doesn't matter what value we have. And let's say that the other positions in which it shows up would be one, two, four, uh, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and 12. Let's say, let's say that the array has n equals 12. And now when we think of this position here, five, let's assume that it starts already with being a good one. So given that it starts already with being a good one, we can already add to the answer five minus one. So we would have 
four positions here and we can form subarrays out of everything up to position four. So we would have four times five over two, which is 10 subarrays. And similarly, everything that starts from six onwards can also work. We have here seven positions from six to 12 and we can do seven times eight over two, which is seven times four, 28. Now, how do we compute what can end up being here? So because this is at position five, it can move at most four positions to the left and, or four positions to the right. And for the matter of fact, everything that is, uh, everything that is close enough to the end of the array, for example, if we think at position 12, it can only move one position at most. So if we were to think at the pair 5, 12, then 12 coming to 5 would be possible in only one scenario. And similarly for 9, uh, 9 can already be, uh, can already come to 5 in, five, in 4 scenarios, either 5, 9 or something like 4, 10 or 3, 11 or uh, uh, 2, 12. So 4 scenarios. However, for other numbers, you can see that, for example, 8, we can have 5, 8, 4, 9, 3, 10, uh, 5, 8, 4, 9, 3, 10, 2, 11, and 1, 12. So again, uh, so again, the number of scenarios would be limited by this position instead. So for all of these ones, the number of scenarios would be 4. So we would be strictly limited by what we have here. Again, for this one, it would also be four. And here, for example, for this one, it would be five, because if we have a position which is already good, then it can be uh, added in five subarrays. And now also for these positions, we would be limited by that position. And now the goal is for us to compute uh, this sort of sum, where we might have uh, a certain number of uh, let actually for five seven it would be also five. So we would have uh, even for five eight uh, five eight four nine uh, three ten to eleven. So this would already be five. So again, uh, the number of scenarios for these two positions is five, not four. Sorry about that. And now the goal for us is to compute this sort of sum for every position fast enough. And Two very important things we need to be careful about is that if we look at the at how this sum grows or changes, we will have a steadily increasing sum, then a peak, and then it goes steadily down. But the issue is that some of the positions might be missing. For example, here in this scenario, we don't have a tree at all. So no tree, also no two, no three here as well. So Again, some of the values are missing. So it's not a simple closed form formula. However, we can compute some prefix sums for the left and for the right, where we can store how many of these subarrays would occur for each position. So we would have a prefix sum of the positions, one, two, four, five, and so on. And we can also do a prefix sum to the right, where for each position we store the distance from the end. One, then for this one it would be four, five, six, and so on. Now, why are these sums very useful? Because when we think about it, we can reduce the process to computing the prefix and the suffix, which give us uh, smaller answers than the position we are currently at. And then we can add the current position times the number of other positions we, multi we didn't check yet. But this is not going to be enough because, for example, if we were to have, instead of 5, 8, we would have also had a maximum of 5. So instead of checking how many positions are at most equal to i, we would have actually something like a minimum between i and n minus i plus one, because we need to also store the distance to the end. And in order to perform all of these computations, 
after we did the, the prefix sums and the binary searches, all we have to do is to be a bit careful at the math behind it. Again, here these parts can be done with prefix sums, here a bit of math, and also taking in account the case when we have a match for the external subarrays. And then we would be able to obtain the answer pretty easily. And let me show you also how to code this out because this solution is very instructive. So for this problem, I had the positions of the values as well as the prefix sum of uh, the entire uh, of these positions. Again, we have the ranges outside. We need to be careful about just in case. And we can now we can binary search for the positions that are smaller or equal than i, as well as for the positions that are greater or equal than the maximum between i and n minus i plus 1. So again, we need to be careful of these minimums and maximums to avoid overcounting. Again, two binary searches which help us compute the answer. And using the prefix sums, we then find out the formulas where we avoid the overcounting due to being on a certain position. And then here I want to consider also the middle part, which contributes completely to the answer. And we do this for every single position. So now very important to notice that after doing the binary searches, we need to be careful to avoid situations in which we don't run into subarrays that do not exist. Because these subarrays can affect us towards finding the answer and we want to be careful to avoid these situations. And with that being said, you can observe that in this problem, we evolve from having an n squared solution to a solution that runs in n log n time by using prefix sums and binary searches for each position from 1 to n. We also were careful about computing the contribution of each value to the overall answer as well as contributing the, uh, con the contribution the subarrays that don't include the current value have to the answer. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any sort of feedback or suggestion, please leave them in the comments as I want to make my videos better and better as we go through the USECO problems and as we go through other past USECO problems. In addition, if you or someone else you know is interested in working more closely with me, you can check out the links in the description for ways to join my tutoring program as well as for other ways to interact with me. And until the next time, good luck with the next USECO contest and see you in the other videos in the channel for this contest or you can also check out the videos I made for the past USECO contest. Good luck, good luck and see you next time.